State champ Cabot Panthers played host to the second best team from the West, Bentonville. Highlights of those games and many more, plus the latest Hooton's rankings and we'll head to Hope where a guy named DD makes A's and B's and is this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week. It's all straight ahead in the next 30 minutes on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You make sure you're physical. Lot riding on the ball game. Get that blood in your eyes and you play with heart. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. We're down to the final four in Class 5A and 4A and the Elite Eight in AAA and AA. And we'll show you how the teams advance to the semifinal and quarterfinal rounds in the playoffs. Coming up in the next 30 minutes on Hooton's Arkansas Football, we have highlights, of course, the latest Hooton's rankings, our scholar athlete, and much more. It's all coming up in the next 30 minutes. We're glad you're with us, and we'll get started with a look at last night's Class 5A playoff games coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Hooton's Arkansas brought to you by Lander. That's right, Mama. El Dorado was in the house and looking for revenge last night at Russellville. The Cyclones won just three games last season, but made the playoffs and then shocked the state with its first round win at El Dorado. Last night, the roles were reversed a bit. Russellville riding a 10 game winning streak and the favorite, but El Dorado had a little trouble running the ball against Russellville. Brandon Jamerson right up the middle and then the pass to Curtis Clark, who makes a great catch and keeps his feet in bounds. El Dorado led seven to nothing. Russellville responded immediately though. Quarterback Landon Leach passing to super sophomore Tracy Steiger over the middle. And then Leach rolls right, finds Kevin Elliott for the touchdown. Elliott's TD tied it at seven, just seven minutes into the game. El Dorado would retake the lead on its next possession with Jamerson pulling his way through traffic and sprinting to the end zone. Jamerson is just a junior, but he finished the night with a phenomenal 39 carries for 245 yards. And the Wildcats avenged last year's loss with senior kicker Chris Hollinsworth. He was perfect on extra points and nailed a 35-yard field goal in the final seconds to win. Final score, El Dorado 24, Russellville 21. The best quarterback left in the playoffs is this guy, Alan Schlagenhoff from Bentonville. He passed for 251 yards last night at Cabot, and the Tigers made it look easy on their first series, driving 79 yards on the defending state champion Panthers. Schlagenhoff completed four or five passes on the drive, including the big gainer to Drew Denny, and then the touchdown toss to Challen Aswell, and Bentonville led seven to nothing. A little bit later, Aswell fumbled a punt on his own 11-yard line, but Cabot couldn't score. In fact, the Panthers only managed three first downs in the first half, but they only needed one big play from sophomore Chris Robertson to tie it up. Robertson worked hard to get loose and then runs as fast as he can, and it would be just fast enough to cross the goal line, and that made it 7-7. Seven to seven. Bentonville had another chance to score just before halftime, but Cabot's defense turned the Tigers away on fourth and goal from the one-foot line on the final play of the first half. Schlagenhaft scored on a one-yard sneak in the third quarter to give Bentonville a 14-7 lead and then would score again on a 28-yard run with less than a minute left in the game to set the final margin. Final score, Bentonville 21, Cabot 7. Bentonville is not the only team from the West headed to the semifinals. The Tigers will be joined by Fort Smith Southside in the final four. Last night, the Rebels became the third team from the West to beat Conway this season. Rebel running back Ortiz Banks has been slowed by an ankle injury since midseason, but had a good night at Conway. He capped a 67-yard Southside drive with the one-yard touchdown run. That tied the score at seven early in the second quarter. Conway would regain the lead, though, as Craig Connor booted a 24-yard field goal to make it 10-7. 
But then, the Rebels would rip out Conway's heart with two touchdowns in the final two and a half minutes of the first half. Sophomore quarterback John Thomas hits Ben Bracken, another sophomore, for an 18-yard gain, and then Banks scored from six yards out to make it 14 to 10. Southside would get the ball back 59 seconds later, and Thomas heaves up a prayer on the final play of the first half, and it comes down in the hands of Banks. Jackpot. Southside led by 18 in the fourth quarter. The final, Rebels 28, Conway 18. Now that Conway is out of the playoffs, Texarkana is the most athletic team left. The Razorbacks won in overtime last night and will play host to Bentonville next week. Texarkana likes to run. Bentonville has the best quarterback left playing in Class 5A. Southside won at El Dorado 32-7 in the season opener. They're headed back to El Dorado next week. Russellville lost last night and has still never made it to the playoff semifinals. Cavett starts the second five. There's West Memphis and Conway. The Wampus Cats were the only team from the 5A Central to win a playoff game this year, but in their past 11 postseason games, Conway is 4-7. 45 seniors graduated from Springdale last year, but they still won seven games this season. Coach Gus Malzahn already has the turf up in Springdale that War Memorial Stadium wants. And he also laid a foundation with his spread offense this fall to make the Bulldogs one of the state's most exciting teams to watch next year. Bryant is looking forward to moving out of the South and into the Central Conference. Pine Bluff starts the second 10. Benton and Bryant will still play. It just won't be a conference game. The Saline County shootout is scheduled for the second week of the season the next two years. Northside's 13. There's Lake Hamilton and Central. Mountain Home made the playoffs. So did Mills and McClellan. Van Buren beat Conway earlier this year, but finished near the bottom of the West. And Jacksonville finishes the top 20. <laughs> Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football Highlights and the latest rankings from Class 4A. Plus, we'll take you to Hope for this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week. I'm Victoria McGee, and I'm Lacey Harris. Stay tuned for more Hooton's Arkansas Football. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic. Well, we need to tell our fans back home that if we don't show up in the next couple of days, that they may want to send help because we're right amongst the Monticello Billies up here, and uh, me and Rick are not known for being unbiased. That's the Cersei Lion broadcast team on KBGR with Sonic's Greg Rowden on play-by-play -play and color man Rick Sammons. And speaking of burgers, few teams were hotter than the Lions, who had won six in a row entering last night's second-round game at Monticello. The Lions upset Monticello in the first round last year and struck a blow early, recovering the opening kickoff. That sets up Cersei's best weapon in the first quarter. Kicker Nathan Rutledge, he nails the 43-yard field goal and the Lions led three to nothing. But here come the Billies behind hard running standout Delvin Ship. Teammate Nick Foster gets loose and spins his way all the way down to the 20 on the next play. Then it's Ship's turn breaking tackles in the backfield and finding the outside. Then that would set up quarterback John Jackson. He's a Razorback recruit. He gets in from one yard out. Jackson's touchdown put the Billies ahead 7-3. to three. On Cersei's next series, the Lions would go to sophomore fullback Weston Dacus. Dacus has had a huge year, and he gets into the secondary, but this drive would stall, and Rutledge would come on again, this time drilling a 52-yard field goal to cut Monticello's lead to 7-6. to six. But Cersei was about to meet the real Lion killers. Monticello's Ryan Shepard, who takes the Jackson toss, cuts back, and picks up some nice blocks. Shepard caught a 71-yard touchdown pass in the third quarter and returned an interception for a score in the fourth. And Jackson was getting it done on both sides of the ball also. He added another short TD in the second quarter, and he takes out Dacus on this sweet play. Cersei's Earl Young took over for the Lions late in the first half with the sweet catch from quarterback Matt Long. That would set up this short touchdown run to cut the lead to 14-12 but the Billies would hold on in the second half, and next week they're headed to win for a big semifinal matchup between the Billies and the Yellow Jackets. Final score from last night in Monticello, Billies 28, Cersei 19.
Wynn has lost in overtime the past two years in the semifinals on its home field. And that's exactly where the Yellow Jackets will be next Friday, back in Wynn with the semifinal game. When Monticello rolls into town, the Billies may have as many as four Division I players on their roster. Stuttgart won at Alma last night, and the Ricebirds are in the semifinals for the first time in almost two decades. Earlier this year, Stuttgart beat Watson Chapel 20-19 to the fourth week of the regular season. They will meet again next week in Stuttgart. Alma finishes the year at number five, and Hope is number six. Hope has a 23-3 record over the past two years. Searcy missed a couple of scoring opportunities last night. Rutledge could have kicked a game-winning field goal late, but the Lions went for it on fourth down. Osceola finishes the year at number eight, and there's Greenwood in Arkadelphia. West Helena starts the second ten. Crossit is the only 4A team to beat Monticello this year. The Eagles are followed by Pulaski, Robinson, Batesville, and Magnolia. Then it's Newport, Siloam Springs, Morrilton, Harrison, and Malvern. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. There's no question D.D. Holyfield takes football seriously as the Hope senior rushed for almost 2,000 yards and 18 touchdowns last season. But he says football takes a backseat to his work in the classroom and he has a 3.75 GPA to back that up. Some students think it's, it's just football, but it's mostly your academics. Your academics come first, and the rest of it will take care of itself. D.D. Holyfield, a true Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to D.D., our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 3A highlights are straight ahead. More of Hooton's Arkansas football. Brought to you by First Security Bank. And we begin our Class 3A highlights in West Little Rock, where last night, Pulaski Academy and the Dardanelle Sand Lizards met. The two teams combined for 21 wins coming into this game. PA jumped out early, though. 14-0 lead for the Bruins, and this is record-setting quarterback Thomas Thrash setting up Quentin Jones on the screen. And look at Q, tiptoe down the sidelines all the way to the four. On the next play, it's Thrash lobbing it to the end zone. That's Blake Miller for the touchdown. Adam Butenshawn would add the extra point, and PA led 21 to nothing. Pulaski Academy's defense doesn't get a whole lot of credit, but last night they shut down Dardanelle in the first half. Linebacker Scott Landers, Matt Stoltz, and Peter Weiss leading the way. They limited the Sand Lizards to just 247 yards offense last night. Thrash would continue his onslaught in the second half, finding Jones for a 25-yard gain. A few plays later, Thrash connects with Miller for an 18-yard screen pass, and the Bruins took a commanding 27-0 lead. Thrash finished the night with seven touchdown passes, and the senior has thrown for a national record 77 TDs this year. Final score, PA 49, Dardanelle 14. The Gosnell Pirates made it to the second round of the playoffs for the second straight year, but last night the Pirates had to travel to Jefferson County and visit the high-flying Dollar Wade Cardinals. Early on, Gosnell led 14-6, but Dollar Wade comes back. Quarterback Eddie Ringo throws over the middle to Rodney McGee, and look at Rodney avoiding a tackler, hurtling another one, and weaving his way 68 yards to the end zone. With a couple of minutes left in the half, Gosnell's sophomore quarterback, Bo Whitaker, tries to make a play, throws it up for grabs in the end zone, and Dollar Way's Terrence Freeman takes the gift, returns it up to the 31-yard line. Then Ringo beats Dollar Way's drum, taking the ball in the shotgun formation, rolls right, cuts up field, then to the left before twisting and turning, right back for a big game before Gosnell can finally run him out of bounds. Two plays later, it's Ringo hitting Sahib Rogers for a quick 20-yard gain. Then it's McGee just stretching and making the touchdown grab, and the Cardinals go up 20 to 14. Dollarway would dominate late in the game, setting up a showdown next week at Pulaski Academy. Final score, Cardinals 36, Gosnell 14. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. Warren just finished flogging Farmington this afternoon down in Warren, so the Lumberjacks are number one. They're followed by Dollarway and Boonville. The Bearcats blasted Fordyce last night, but Boonville's quarterback, Brett West, may be out for the rest of the season with an injury. 
Clarksville is number five. The Panthers had to forfeit their 10 wins this year, but the Panthers were still one of the best in the state. Nashville has won six straight games, and Star City is in the quarterfinals for the second time in the past four years. Dumas starts the second 10. The Bobcats have won four straight games and are headed to Nashville next week. Then it's Yellville Summit, Ashdown, Gosnell, and BB. Truman is 16, followed by Hamburg, Ozark, Prairie Grove, and the Queen at number 20. Coming up next. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football. Brought to you by Arkansas Heart Hospital. And we begin our Class 2A highlights in Desark, where last night the Eagles put Mayflower in a pickle early. Joel Buck takes the opening kickoff, goes right up the middle, cuts back out to the left sideline, and look at the Buck run all the way down to the 15-yard line. That sets up Reagan Covington's short touchdown run four plays later, and Desark was up 7 to nothing early. Desark goes on to maul Mayflower, and the Eagles are headed back to Barton for a showdown next week. Final score, Desark 36, Mayflower 7. Staying with the 6AA teams, it was the Hayes and Hornets taking their shot at mighty Shiloh Christian last night at the Field of Champions in Springdale. On Hazen's first possession, quarterback Greg Thompson lost it up, and there's Shiloh's Mike Sellers coming down with it, and he takes it back to the five-yard line. Sellers was getting it done on both sides of the ball for Shiloh. He takes the next play and runs in for the touchdown. Hazen didn't back down, though. That's Brian Aaron de Nick Floyd near the goal line. But the night belonged to Shiloh's quarterback, Rhett Lashley. Rhett completed 10 passes for 191 yards and six touchdowns, including this one to James Schisler. Lashley now has the national career touchdown record with 168 TD tosses over the past three years. Next week, Shiloh plays host to Camden Harmony Grove. Final score, Saints 52 Hazen, 14. Defending state champion Ryzen was at Augusta last night, but it was the Red Devils that looked like a state title contender making a statement early. Augusta's Brandon Brown breaks free, sprints 35 yards for the touchdown. Just a little bit later, it's Augusta's Antonio Gant going up and over for the touchdown. The Red Devils were up 14 to nothing. Ryzen tried to respond. Tyrell Johnson breaks free, goes 75 yards to the end zone but the play would be called back. A holding penalty against Ryzen. The Wildcats didn't need that. They didn't get much going on offense. Jackie Wynn intercepted five passes for Augusta last night, and the Red Devils roll over Ryzen. Final score, Augusta 34, Ryzen 14. The Danville Little John surprised everyone a year ago with a trip to the playoff quarterfinals. But just like last year, Danville's season would end on the field of a 7AA East team. Last night in Hampton, it was the Bulldogs advancing to the quarterfinals for the first time in school history. Daryl Smith rushed for 90 yards, including this 35-yard touchdown run for Hampton. And teammate Daryl Ware stepped up on defense, picking off this Danville pass as the Bulldogs rolled. Danville lost at Ryzen in the quarterfinals last year, and last night at Hampton, the final score, Bulldogs 35, Little John's 14. At Augusta had the best athletes, they had better athletes than anybody in our conference. They've got a tremendous football team, guys. They've got a tremendous football team, but we do have an advantage. They gotta come to the doghouse and play. I really don't know anything about Augusta, but we really know a lot about Ryzen. I believe we should have beat Ryzen. Uh, so if Augusta beats them, I believe it'll be a really tough matchup for me, for us, Hampton versus Augusta. Camden Harmony Grove may be the hottest team in Class 2A right now, but last night it was Harding Academy that came out smoking. Quarterback Caleb Keyes hits Bradley Watkins for a short touchdown pass. The Wildcats were up early, but Harmony Grove answers right back with quarterback Ronald Askew hitting Josh Green for a big gain all the way down to the 40-yard line. A couple of plays later, senior Pierre Billingley would take it 40 yards for the touchdown. Billingley would finish with 206 yards on the night, and Harmony Grove wins in the second round for the first time in school history. Final score, Harmony Grove 44, Harding Academy 31. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings. Shallow Christian is still untested by a double-A team this year. Hampton's only loss this season was to Ryzen. Ryzen was ripped by Augusta last night. And next week, it's Augusta at Hampton. 
Harmony Groves number three, and Augusta jumps up eight spots to number four. Then it's Carlisle, Junction City, Harding Academy, Rice, and Charleston, and Barton, a solid team that's still playing with that sweet draw. Barton plays Desart next week. Mineral Springs is number 11, then it's Danville, Foreman, Murfreesboro, and Hazen, followed by Desart, Greenland, Mayflower, Mark Tree, and Bauxite. So Shallow Christian is still the team to beat in Class 2A, and we will have highlights of the Saints and many more games next week. We hope to see you back here next Saturday night for Hooten's Arkansas Football. Ready three?